going to discuss Asperger's and emotional incest and how it correlates and how it just relates to autism and Asperger's in general. Emotional incest basically has to do a lot with helicopter parenting in the sense that the parent oversteps their bounds and they smother the child. In this case, let's say, let's give an example of a son, for instance, who has Asperger's, like let's say I have Asperger's, which I do. And let's say they, they have a single mom. And the mom has got no outside life of her own other than her son. Her son's a reflection of her. And there tends to be emotional incest from that. And that's what you want to watch out for. And parents, if you're getting overly too close to your kid that way, where there needs to be boundaries and the kid has a right you know, to a life of their own, I get that it's your kid, but you can't do everything. That's why there's bounds and boundaries. You gotta know when to keep away. Like for example, a mom shouldn't go around the house walking half naked in a nightgown or in a bikini or whatever around her son or any of her kids actually. It's, just, it's unprofessional. It's not right, it's wrong. I think a lot of these moms oftentimes have emotional issues of their own, stemming from their own childhood. And now that they have their kids, they don't know what to do and they think that's the way to act. They don't realize that's not a way to act. If you come from an abusive background like I've come from, there's just certain things that you don't do. You don't repeat the same mistakes that went on in your life. You do the complete opposite. Uh, a boy has got a right to his privacy. You shouldn't be in there stooping around through his personal things. Whatever girl he speaks to. You shouldn't really get involved in their business, reading their text messages. You're violating privacy right there. Accompanying them on dates. You don't need to be doing that. Let them go on their own and if you want to meet the partner, I understand. Meet the partner. But leave it at that. Don't go in and don't try to screw up the relationship. That's emotional abuse and emotional incest, Mom. You got no right to be snooping around. Boys will be boys. One way or another, they're gonna get whatever it is they're looking for. I mean, when I was a teenager, I hated my life. I was ready to commit suicide. I didn't have a girlfriend, I didn't have a partner, I didn't... I was stuck at home with a mom who was emotionally unstable, who did the best she could, but ended up where she is today, with a lot of health problems, elderly, going blind from not taking her diabetic medication. That's what happens when you don't take care of yourself. You can't just sit there and make your child your whole life. It doesn't work that way. You need to have a separate life of your own that doesn't involve the kid or where the kid doesn't involve you or whatever. You gotta create a parallel and a separation. And a lot of you are needy, clingy, and have separation anxiety, but it's not the way to do it. I know another kid who's autistic. His mom's like bipolar and she they're always like hugging and holding hands and he's 16 years old. He should not be doing that with his mother. I mean, don't get me wrong, his mother's an attractive woman. She's in her 40s. She's good looking, but he don't need to be holding hands with his mother. That's, that's not right. It gives him the wrong message and he needs to learn that when she passes, you can't go up and just hold hands with anybody. You get your ass beat for that. You don't go around touching people without asking. You gotta have some kind of connection established first. This kid would always hug me all the time and honestly annoyed the fuck out of me. But I had empathy because the kid was autistic. I let him get away with it. He even kissed me on the cheek, which I really didn't like at all. I was uncomfortable with it, but I should have said something, but I didn't say anything. I let him get away with it because his mom lets him get away with everything. I mean, if the parent's not gonna teach them 
then it's not my place to teach that person's child. But I'm going to teach the parents something here. Because you parents need to fucking listen. You need to stop fucking up your kids' lives. You need to do what's right and respect their privacy. And not be involved in their personal business. In terms of who they date, and what boy or what girl they like, whether they're gay or straight, not Christian, not religious, that's not your business. Every person, every child, every individual has a right to choose who they want to be and what they want to be. That includes even if they want to be a mass murderer someday, let them be that way. Even though you know it's wrong and it's evil, let them learn. The only way to let someone be is to just let them learn. If they want to aspire to be the next Charles Manson, let them be. It's not your business and it's not my business. You can't change somebody if that's their destiny. Because evil lives all around. That's just the way it is. You can't put evil down. If it's meant to be, it's meant to be. There's no way around it. No such thing as preventing evil. I don't think there's one damn thing that could have been done to save the lives of Charles Manson, Richard Ramirez, Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer. Not one thing that their parents or families could have done differently. Except for maybe give them a little more love. It is always good to be affectionate to your child, but not like that lady and her son. You don't want that. You want to create a barrier and teach them healthy, healthy touching, healthy body language. When I was three years old, I used to go up and grope women's thighs. I don't know why I did it. I had a tick or a fetish for it at three years old. I'd always sexually get aroused, and I'd do it all the time to everybody. I mean, nobody told me that that was wrong. Somebody should have. Because now as an adult, I've done that, and I know it's wrong now. But there's that urge that lives within. I'm not proud of it, but I'm guilty. And as far as emotional incest and emotional abuse goes, withholding love can be a form of emotional abuse too. If you have many children, you have more than one child, you're not going to be able to distribute the love evenly. Let's say there's five children there. How are you going to love all five of them equally? A lot of people who come from bigger backgrounds, who have more than one sibling, have always struggled to find that love from their family and their parents because people don't know how to use birth control. They don't know how to limit themselves or how to not have sex. And they end up stuck with these children. These children get born and they suffer. You got to do what's right and you got to take care of them. You gotta show them the better path and the better way. But you also gotta give them their independence and you gotta let them be. Teach them, but don't talk at them. Oftentimes when people teach, it's sort of like, I'm bigger than you, I'm better than you, you're smaller than me method. That doesn't work. You gotta sink down to their level and you gotta teach them something, you gotta show them something, you gotta learn from them too. Just hear what they gotta say, just listen to them. A lot of times I think people don't listen to their kids. My mom didn't listen to me when I was a kid. That's for damn sure. Nobody listened to me when I was a kid. If people listen to the kids more often, maybe a lot of things in the country that are going on wouldn't even happen, honestly. You have got to be there to support them, but you got to do it the right way. You can't withhold love and expect to spread all the love evenly when there's so many children in the household. It's just not going to happen. People shouldn't even be allowed to have that many kids, in my opinion. There should be a cap and a limit of only three max to any household. We already have too many people living in this country anyways. I mean, shit. Pretty soon we'll be like China over here. There's too many fucking people here. And that's the problem. And emotional incest, that pretty much just sums it up right there, you know. If a mom who is very like seductive, who uses her looks and her charm and tries to be in her son's romantic life and get involved and make disparaging comments about the partners that he chooses and judges all his friends. My mom judged all my friends, that's why I never introduced her to my friends. It made me shun her and not introduce her to nobody because I was embarrassed of her because of her behavior and her comments about people. It's fucking embarrassing. Why do you want to hear a negative thing about your own friends? Parents are just so fucking stupid. It makes me sick and angry. 
how could they be so fucking stupid? It's not like I was going around hanging with gangbangers and prostitutes back then, or homeless people like I do now as an adult. My mom always judged other people, judged other kids. It's not right to judge other kids. It's wrong. Kids are kids. Let them be. Let them grow. Let them have their fun. Let them have their life. Let them explore. Let them learn. Trial and error. It's very important. I mean, I wish I could be a father. I wish I could have a kid. It's probably never going to happen. But I'd love to have wanted a son, of all things, that I could teach things to, stuff that I never got taught. I never had a father. I had a piece of shit child molester for a father. It's embarrassing. And I wish I could have that for life. But, however, my kid's not going to be like me. He's going to be better than me. Way better. I'm not going to push him for better. He's going to push himself for better. If I ever have a kid, that's what's going to be. I don't want my kid making my mistakes. But if it's out of my hands, it's out of my hands. I'm not going to push it. Like I'm telling you guys, don't push it. Let nature take its course. Let them learn, let them free, let them be wild. Let them run with the pack. Because that's what life's about. 